simple type of loop, the while loop. Recall that with while loops, you set an initial condition and the loop runs until that condition is met. You can't explicitly control the loop variable. With for loops, you will be telling MATLAB how many cycles you want the loop to complete. This gives you a lot more user control and makes some operations a lot more efficient. So let's just look at what a for loop is and how it's written. So this is going to be the form of a for loop. It always starts with the word for. And we're going to have our variable, which is equal to the number of cycles we want to the loop to run for. So a start number, a step if we have one, and then the stop number. And then just like with while loops, beneath within the loop you'll have your commands. And then you just, as with while loops as well, you want to end your loop. So let's just give an example. It's best to learn from an example. So four, and then we're going to be displaying x for, just like we did previously, we're going to display x from one to nine. So x is our variable, is equal to one is our starting number to nine. We're not going to skip anything at this moment. And then we're just going to display x as our command, and then we're going to end our loop. So let's save this as a for loop, save, place. and let's run it. So we're displaying x from 1 to 9. If we wanted to, say, only display the odd variables from 1 to 9, we would make a skip of every other number starting at 1. So here we have a step of 2. Let's run it again run and here we go we're only displaying the odd numbers from 1 to 9. So this is an easy example of a for loop. Now we're gonna see how you would write for loops within other for loops, so nested for loops. You've kind of seen some type of nesting with if statements where you have if statements within other if statements or else if statements. Um, so let's just create a new for loop in the editor. So we'll have for and here we're going to create a loop that, actually let's just say, we should always comment within our functions and our scripts so that individuals know what's being said. So a nested for loop that displays, and we're going to be displaying an x and a y and then the sum of x and y for however many x and y's we choose. So in this case, we're going to go from 0 to 3 x's and 0 to 3 y's. That displays the outer x, the inner y loop, and then there, there's some x plus y. So telling the user what our loop does. So let's cycle through all the x's first. So x is our variable and we're going from 0 to 3. And then we're going to display x. So we're going to display, use the display function, writing script. So we use the single parentheses. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Quotation, single quotations. Current x is and then we put a blank so that way the the x will be displayed where that blank is and then since we're displaying a number we're trying to display a number we need to convert the number to a string using the num to stream function you can look it up in the help section so that's how we display x and now we're going to display y and for y, we are also going y is equal to 0 to 3, same number of cycles. We're going to display, let me just copy it. Just copy this and change it to y. The current y is the number to string of y. And now we want to display their sum as well. 
So we're going to say x x plus y is and then num to string of x plus y. Then we're going to end our nested for loop, and then I'm just going to insert a display a blank a blank space so as to make it look neater when it's when we're actually displaying everything. And then we're going to end the outer loop. So let's save this as nested loop replace. Let's see what we get. So let's see what our loop actually gave us. So the current y is 0, the current x is 0, it displays x plus y, and then it keeps doing that and goes for every x from 0 to 3 and every y from 0 to 3. This is another example of a nested loop. Let's kind of look at something that may be more helpful for you in future situations. We're going to be converting a matrix M. Let's just make a matrix M right now. Let's say it's a magic matrix. It really doesn't matter. So we're going to convert this matrix M, and we want to convert it to a vector. So we're going from a 2D matrix with rows and columns to just a vector that's a single row and many columns. So, so let's look at that. This is going to be involved two for loops because we're going to have to cycle through the columns of the matrix and then through the rows to get each specific value. So let's just, let's just put a comma and say assume M matrix exists so that way we don't have to make one within the loop. And then, we're, like I said, we're cycling through the columns and the rows. So let's go through. We need to get the number of rows and columns this matrix has. So I'm going to say R for rows and C for columns is equal to size of M. For now, I'm going to leave everything unsuppressed so when I run it the first time, we can see the cycle. And then we need our vector matrix where we're going to put the numbers in. And then we need our for loop. So like I said, we're cycling through the columns first. So COL for, stands for columns is our variable, and we're going from the first column to the last column, which in our case is C, right? So we're going column by column, and then once we get into the first column, we need to go to the first row, so we need another for loop. Row is equal to and then 1, 2, R, because that's how many rows we have. And now we're gonna do we're gonna execute our command. So what we want to do is we want to take that specific value, the specific row column value, and add it to v. So we're gonna say v is equal to matrix vector v and m of row column. And then we're gonna end the nested for loop and the outer for loop and then we're going to display V. So let's see what we have here. Save this as M to V. Replace M oops, to V. How did I save it as? Oh, save it as little M. Here we go. Let's see. I left everything on suppressed as we can see. So obviously our matrix M was a 3x3 three three matrix. So R is 3, C is 3, and then we have our empty vector, and then we pull the oops, we pull the first value out of 1, 1, which is 8, and then we pull the first value in row 2, and the first value in row 3, and then we move on to column 2 and continue until we convert the entire matrix. So you always want to make sure that you suppress things that don't need to be seen. So I'm going to do that right now. Suppress all of this, save it, and let's run it again. And here all we see is the converted matrix from 2D to 1D. So those are four loops. Remember in the assignment that you do for this week, Unless explicitly stated, every loop that you make should be a for loop.